Bed. Our children, on the whole, look very normal Bed. and uh, attractive children, and then they make a strange no. noise. And this is um, somewhat repellent to certain people. And I, ten I think there are, tend to be two um, responses. On the one hand, deaf, therefore dumb, which is, of course, not true. Dumbness comes simply because the child doesn't hear the sounds and can't speak. That's one point of view. At the other end of the scale, you get the person who says, oh, there's so much they can do nowadays. Um, they think of gadgets and machines and balloons, and they imagine the problem is solved. And that response really is saying, I don't want to know. They can do so much. Well, the answer is, they can't. The classes are held in a converted garage of the Tumen house down by the riverside. And it's here that Emma and two other deaf children learn their lessons with a specialized teacher of the deaf using cued speech. It's a method Mrs. Tumen heard about during a lecture but then had to travel to America to learn how it worked. She became proficient herself, and then on her return found a teacher willing to try it, so they set up a private class. Cute speech is a way of making sounds that look alike on the lips appear different for a deaf person. Can I give you an example? Please. If I say pat, mat and bat silently, you won't be able to tell the difference between them. A deaf person finds it very difficult to distinguish between these. In fact, impossible without additional help. Now, with cued speech, you give a little hand signal to indicate which of the sounds you're using. So, for instance, that is h, that is m, and that is b. So if I go bat, you'll know that I'm saying bat rather than And so the idea of cued speech is to still try and teach children by the nearest thing you have to hearing. Yes, that's right, to give them a visual equivalent of speech. They have to watch your lips if they're to understand what you're saying, but, and if they watch both your hand and your lips, they should get a complete, completely clear, unambiguous me message. Are you happy with your results so far? Do you really think you're getting somewhere? Yes, I'm delighted with them. I really thought originally that Emma's type of deafness was the one that would benefit. It obviously is doing so. And the other two children who have more hearing are also benefiting. Could you actually even get the rhythm of speech? Yes, very much so. That's one of, the, um, one of its rather um, interesting and, and clever features. You can say, for instance, instead of saying, um, this is a bowl, you can say, this is a bowl, as we would say it. This is a bowl, for instance. You can get the normal rhythm of speech. You don't just cue individual words like that. You cue it rhythmically. So the child has a visual equivalent of the speech rhythms that we normally use. The bed. Good. Show me the man. Show me the bed. Show me the bat. Deaf children have little trouble learning nouns. It's the linking words like and, but, with, was that can't be demonstrated by just pointing. This is a problem that could be overcome with cued speech. Can you give me an example of, of how the linking words can be confused? Um, yes, I think the simplest example is in words it is and it isn't. Um, if I say it is raining, it isn't raining, um, Shall I say them without voice, and then we will see what I mean? Which am I saying? It isn't. No, I'm saying it is raining. Oh, I do see what you mean. And yes. there you have precisely the opposite meaning, but the little unt, which shows that you're using a negative form, you're denying something, just isn't visible. Well, now, why is it that, to me, cued speech is completely new, and I'm sure it probably is to most of our viewers? Well, no, indeed. Indeed, I, I think one could say that a lot of teachers have only just heard of it. Well, this is partly because it was only invented in 1965, and partly because it's an American invention, and partly, too, because things move very slowly in this kind of educational world. People get committed to certain ways of doing things, and they're human, and they don't like changing. They're happy, so this is right. And they're also taking their place in society with children of their own ages. They go to normal schools in the afternoons. Exactly where they will go when they leave here is still in question. 
Alistair is leaving at the end of this term, and he will go to a normal school. But I anticipate he will need more help from a teacher of a deaf, but he will hold his own and do very well, I hope. Uh, Anthony is an intelligent boy, and it's difficult to say now where he will go, but I hope he may make the grammar school for the deaf. And Emma, I hope, will make a secondary hearing unit, but it's still too early to say. I'm not going to make big claims for it and say it's the answer to everything, but I would like to see it in one or two school, used in one or two schools, um, so that we can see where we are, we can see how helpful it can be. I certainly don't think it can do any harm, of that I'm completely certain, and I feel that with children like Emma, it can only do good. How much good, we can only tell if it is used.